Okay, in our next example, we are going to kind of take the idea that happened here in our second example here. We try to evaluate f of 2. We're going to kind of expand upon that. That answer made my, gave me an expression that was undefined, caused me to divide by 0. In this case, it was 15 divided by 0. Whatever it was, it caused me to divide by 0. And that led to my expression being undefined. We could go back to the original function and ask ourselves the question, is there another number other than 2 that would also make that undefined? Is there another value that would lead to doing arithmetic that we can't do? Well, one of the arithmetics that we can't do is we can't divide by 0. Can't divide by 0. So is there anything else that would cause us to divide by 0? And some of you might already be shouting out, 0! Zero. 0 would also make the bottom 0, and we would also be dividing by 0. If we put 0 in, that would be 4 times 0 plus 7 would just be 7 the bottom would be zero and we can't do that either so zero would also make that undefined so we're going to take that idea and we're going to kind of expand upon that now in the following example so we say determine which numbers if any, would make the function undefined over the real numbers. We're looking at real number inputs. Are there any real number inputs that would make the function undefined? So consider first the function here. f of x equals x squared plus 3x plus 2 over x squared minus 4x minus 12. So one of the things I'd be concerned about is just like in the problem up above. Uh, are there numbers that could cause me to divide by 0? And so towards that end, to make it a little easier to see which, if there's any, numbers would cause me to divide by 0, I'm going to go ahead and factor both parts of my fraction as if I was trying to simplify it. So up top, we'd need things that multiply to be 2 that add to be a positive 3. And that would simply just be an x plus 1 and an x plus 2. And in the bottom, we're looking for things that multiply to be a negative 12 and add to be a negative 4. And that would be a positive 2 and a negative 6. Now, you may spot real quickly that you have an x plus 2 and x plus 2 on top and bottom and think about, okay, I want to cancel that out. But don't worry about that idea right now uh, because we're just interested in uh, what would make our function undefined. That's all we're worried about. So um, if I plugged in x equals negative 2, that would make the bottom be 0. That would also make the top be 0, and I would get 0 over 0. Now, 0 over 0 does not cancel out to be 1. That's the one time that it doesn't work out, because we still can't divide by 0. So 
uh, I can't divide this expression by 0. So x equals negative 2 has to be thrown out. That also makes the top 0. Uh, we still have to throw it away. We still have to throw it away because we can't divide by the 0. And in a similar fashion, uh, x equals 6 would make the bottom 0. Uh, if you plug a 6 in the top, that's going to be actually 7 times 8 and be 56. You're going to have 56 over 0, but you still can't divide by 0. So the 6 is also going to uh, bring us a problem here. And those are the only two values. Negative 1 is okay, because if we plug negative 1 in, the top is going to be 0, of course, negative 1 times whatever, 0 times 0, whatever would be 0 times whatever would be 0. In the bottom, you'd have negative 1 plus 2 would be 1, uh, negative 1 minus 6 would be negative 7. Well, you can do that problem, 0 divided by negative 7, that's 0. All right. And so the x equals negative 1 there in the top being 0, that's not a problem for us. That's not a problem for us at all. The x plus 2 is a problem because it makes the bottom 0, not because it makes the top 0. So that one doesn't count. We just throw that away. And so it's just those two values there. Negative 2 and 6 will would make f undefined. Okay, Those values would make f undefined. So the first thing we can kind of observe here is anything that causes the denominator to be 0 would make the function undefined. Anything that makes the denominator 0 would make our function undefined. And so that's our first thing that we violate. That's the first uh, way that we can have a function breakdown if we're dividing by zero if we're dividing by zero let's turn to a second example here let's consider the function here g of x equals the square root of x square root of x and we're again thinking what values would make my function undefined well unlike the problem up above uh, I could plug 0 into the square root because square root of 0 is 0. But we ask here undefined over the real numbers. There are some numbers that we can put in to square root of x, say negative 1, for example, that give us a non-real answer. That give us a non-real answer. Okay, that give us a non-real answer. And those things have to be rejected. Those things have to be rejected because they don't give us a real value on a graph. A real value on a graph. And so anything that's negative would make f undefined in this problem. if we're talking about going across real numbers, which when we deal with functions, we're always going to be dealing with them across real numbers only. And so our second issue is even roots of negatives. The second way we can violate the rules of arithmetic is with even roots of negative numbers even roots of negative numbers. Cube roots would be okay. You can do cube root of negative 1 and get a real number answer. It's just simply negative 1. Cube root of negative 1 is just negative 1. Then let's turn to another example here. Let's consider the function here f of x equals x squared plus 8x plus 12. So we're asking ourselves the question, is there anything that I can put in for x that would make this function undefined? Is there anything that would make this undefined? 
Well, think about what we're doing here. Anything that I put in here, I would be squaring it. Well, I can square any two numbers, right? And I can multiply any number by 8. And then all those things would just be numbers. And I can add any numbers, add up any numbers. So this one here has nothing that would make it undefined. This third function here, f of x, has nothing that would make it undefined. And so therefore, uh, therefore, there are no uh, limitations. There are no limitations for a function like that. So right now, what we have is this to kind of summarize what we've just found that if we have division by variables, anything that makes the denominator zero would lead to division by zero, which we can't do. And if we have even roots, then we have to worry about the uh, stuff inside the root being negative. Uh, but other than those two things, if we don't have either of those, then we're dealing with a nothing situation. So what we're going to now do is summarize what we just found out in a, in a slightly different context. Uh, and we're going to have a rule for talking about the domain, because remember the domain is the input values for our function. So here's what we can say now. Uh, for the domain of algebraic functions, for the domain of algebraic functions, for an algebraic function, actually really for any function, but we're specific focusing on algebraic, meaning powers and roots, fractions. For an algebraic function, the domain is the set of values the function can be evaluated for. Set of function values the function can be evaluated for. In other words, the values that it's defined for. And so in our examples up above here, our function right here was not defined for negative 2 or 6. So its domain would be everything except negative 2 or 6. In the second example, this square root of x wasn't defined for negative numbers. So its domain would be x greater than or equal to 0 x greater than or equal to zero. This one didn't have any limitations, so its domain would be all real numbers. Okay. So what this gets us to is a flow chart. I have a little flow chart for domain problems. Uh, a lot of you are used to an algebra problem. Uh, if it's this kind of problem, you do this, right? Find the equation of line, I do this, this, and this, okay? Find the equation of a circle, I do this, this, and this. Uh, but domain problems are going to begin with a question. They're going to begin with questions. The question, the answer to the question is going to dictate what you're going to do for the problem. So our first problem is this. We ask, does our problem have a denominator?
if we answer yes, then we need to exclude all x that make the denominator equal to zero. So that's the first thing. So we're going to end up solving an equation. Denominator equals zero. Denominator equals zero. The second question we're going to ask ourselves is do we have even roots? Do we have even roots? If the answer to that question is yes, then we're going to solve this equation taking the stuff inside the radical, which is called the radican. We're going to solve that inequality. Radican greater than or equal to zero. Okay. And then if we answer no, To both questions. So if we answered no to both, for now we're going to simply say that the domain so again if we answer no to both questions in the domain it's actually going to be everything. Negative infinity to infinity. In other words, all real numbers. But very often in these problems in the homework, you will be asked to write it in interval notation. And so therefore you'll put it in like that. And so when we approach the question of domain, as we're going to be doing in some of these upcoming problems, uh, it's not always going to be do the same, do a certain thing. It's going to be ask questions. What the question is, the answer to those questions, that's going to dictate what we do. That's going to dictate whether we solve an equation equal to zero, whether we solve an inequality, or whether we just simply say, hey, everything works, and we're good to go. So we're going to see that in some upcoming problems here.